Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Weekly Outlook for the week starting August 26, 2013. Before I get into the technicals, I'd like to cover some announcements that can impact the market and really cause some volatility in the week ahead. The only thing we have that's real big in the first part of the week is the durable goods orders, and that's being released tomorrow before the opening bell. However, the big news comes out Thursday and Friday, and that's when we're going to see some movement in the market this week. About one hour before the open, we're going to get both the GDP and the jobless claims on Thursday, and Friday we have the personal income report. These are the three reports that feds are watching carefully and have a major influence on their decision as to when to cut the stimuli program and how much to cut. So we're going to see some volatility towards the end of this week once again. I want to bring up something interesting though. The stock market is very close to the highs right now. And just about every trader knows by now that the stimuli program is coming to an end one way or another. I think the fact that the stock market did not drift too much from the highs when the feds announced that the end of the stimuli is coming soon is a very bullish indication for this market when looking at the big scheme of things. Technically, much of the fuel and momentum we saw on Friday was caused by the tech stocks. And if you look closely, you will see that Microsoft, which has a very large market share of the index and strong influence on the overall market, was the reason why we saw this momentum. The stock gained over $19 billion in market share when news was released that Stephen Bollamer would be stepping down in 12 months. And personally, I believe if he knew when he made this announcement that the market would rise this much, he would have made it even sooner. The stock is now approaching the highs made in late 2007 and looks like it may be heading for a six-year breakout in the coming months. We have to watch Microsoft carefully because it's a very strong barometer for the rest of the tech sector, and it's looking strong right now. The broad market on the technical level is barely above the 50-day moving average, and we closed on the highs. This suggests to me that we're going to open higher tomorrow. It also relieves some pressure that fund selling is coming in. Many large funds key off their buying at these levels. So when we're above the 50-day moving average, there's less overall selling pressure in the market. It's a real simple indicator, but it works very well for the purpose of seeing general market sentiment. It's not a great indicator to time your entry and exits, so be aware of that. The next level on the upside is 1680, and I've had my eyes on this level for a few days now. Much of what happened in the broad market is going to be dependent on the retail sector, which is trading below the 50-day moving average. We have to watch the sector very carefully because Friday we broke the low. The broad market cannot rally too much without most sectors being on the right side of the 50-day moving average. Until we see some strength coming into the retail sector, we won't be able to generate sufficient momentum that we need to keep up with the tech sector. We have very little support at the 77 level on the downside, and real support comes in at the 74 level. But I need to see at least an inside day or something positive, otherwise, this sector will slow down the rest of the market. We don't have too much retail data this week, so let's be hopeful we can once again cross the 50-day moving average, and then we will begin analysis. The bond market is looking interesting, and although we saw some momentum to the upside on Friday and a higher close, we did take out the previous low. And you know how I feel by now about this market long term. So the question is, what can we expect during this week of trading? What I would like to see is a turnaround to the downside and continued momentum below the 124 level. But what we're probably going to see is continued range-bound action with more upside trading. More likely than not, we're going to see us moving back up to the 126 to 127 level and once again continue this moving down beginning Wednesday or Thursday of this week. One clue that we're moving down to a lower level will be if the high that we will see on this swing is below the 127 level. If that's going to be the case, then we're officially once again 
in a downtrend and out of a range bound cycle. Lastly, before we get into the setups, I received a few inquiries about the Japanese yen, which looks to be breaking down a bit from the support area we kept up so well for the last 60 days or so. I wouldn't overreact at this point because the violation is so slight. But overall, if this continues into the week on a daily chart, the next level is par or 1. So let's keep an eye on the yen, especially during the first half of the week. There's a lot of buyers on the sidelines that are very nervous to enter these levels. If we can get some upside from here, we will see good momentum. But if we lag and sell off just a bit more, I'm fairly confident that the next level will be par. If we do move to the upside, we have to be mindful of the 103 level as the next level of resistance. Looking at the setups for the week ahead, we have a real nice looking tail gap to the short side on ticker EXPE. That's Expedia, one of the largest internet travel sites. I recommend selling at the 4865 on a sell stop. And if filled, place a protective buy stop at 5145. Another setup we have is the 4x4 to the short side. This is a low volume stock, so be careful on this one. The ticker symbol is TXI and the name of the company is Texas Industries. Don't mix this up with Texas Instruments. This is Texas Industries. Place a sell stop at 6015 level and if filled, place a protective buy stop at 6275. I'm giving this trade a bit more room because this stock can get volatile. Remember, cancel both orders if no fill by lunchtime New York time. I've been using this rule and it's been increasing my percentage of profitability over the long term and I suggest you do the same. Have a great night everyone and I'll touch base with you tomorrow after the open.